Good morning, friends. Great to be with you again on this Thursday morning. Great to share another devotional video with you as we work our way through some of God's words, through Paul's letter, uh, his letters in lockdown, this letter to the Philippians, thinking and joyful living in Christ. Uh, before we dive into that, I just wanted to remind you that it is Thursday. Uh, there is an email out with prayer points in it. A reminder of our prayer meeting tonight, a link to Zoom for that for you. Be great to see you at 7.15 as we meet to pray together, to encourage one another and uh, to bring our petitions before our great and our awesome uh, God. So, so do join us later on. Do be praying through uh, the day. But this morning I wanted to return to a verse we read on Tuesday and to spend a little bit more time with it. This whole chapter is uh, one of those we could easily take a verse or two at a time and I've tried not to, 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 to not get sidelined in the minutiae and rather to let us see the picture, the slightly bigger picture. But this verse in particular is vitally important for us in a day and age when my experience in pastoral counselling tells me that people have a problem with their thinking. We think on the wrong things. We get so lost and consumed by thinking on them all the time, we lose focus. We become fearful. We forget all that we have in Christ. And so Paul calls us to right thinking here. He calls us to focus on what is excellent. To focus on what is excellent. And so in Philippians 4, in verse 8, here is what we read. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Amen. When I was working in the bank, I would spend a lot of time with computers, uh, training people how to use them, then getting statistics out of them to make reports. And you know, there was a phrase that was uh, banded around back then, G-I-G-O, giggle, garbage in, garbage out. And those four letters summarise a huge truth about computers. What you put into them determines what you get out of them. If your input is garbage, then guess what your output will be? Garbage. And what's true uh, of computers is also true of the human mind. A comparison is apt because the human mind is often being compared to a computer. In fact, the human mind is far more complex than the most advanced computer ever designed. But the basic principle uh, of Gigo, uh, of GIGO is still true. Garbage in, garbage out. The writer Mark Twain wrote, What a wee little part of a person's life are his acts and his words. His real life is led in his head and is known to none but himself. All day long the mill of his brain is grinding and his thoughts, not those of other things, are his history. I would probably modify Twain by saying that our thought life forms the basis for and is largely revealed in our actions and words. But Twain's comments correctly affirm that our thought life composes a major part of who we really are. It was the uh, great Christian uh, thinker and writer Jonathan Edwards who put it this way the ideas and images in men's minds are the invisible powers that constantly govern them thus it's crucial for each of us to bring our thought life into submission to Jesus Christ by learning to think biblically about every aspect of our lives and that's where Paul comes today with these words he wants to draw us to truth to God's word, to God. He is well aware that wrong thinking leads to wrong feeling. And before long, the, the heart and the mind are, are pulled apart and we're strangled by worry. We must realise that you know, thoughts are real and thoughts are powerful. And even though they cannot be seen, weighed or measured, they are real to us. And so we must take our thinking seriously. As Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. We must turn our minds to truth and to God. 
It's time for us to work at turning our minds to God and to worship instead of to doubts and to worry. It's time to note those wrong thoughts down, those unhelpful thoughts, and to write down biblical truth that cancels them out. It's time to think biblically in every area of our lives. Indeed, time to think on God and the things of God all day long. Paul calls for us to focus on what is excellent. It's all to do with right thinking. That's what this verse is all about, right thinking. Let me just read it again. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about such things. Think. Think about what is good. Think about what is godly. Get your mind set right right thinking. Just look at the list Paul gives us here. Whatever is true, get your mind set on truth to begin with. Our world is full of lies, of half-truths, of fake news. We hold dearly to things that have happened to us in the past as if they uh, define us. We cling to words people use to describe us as if they are the whole truth. We listen to the seductive voices of the world around drawing us into lust and deceit. We've come to believe what people have said about us is true when in fact it is nothing short of a lie. Dig into the Bible. See what it says about God, about who he is, and about all he's done. See what it says about you in relation to God. He chose you before the creation of the world. He called you to himself. He revealed himself to you. He has loved you and he has saved you. He has adopted you and he has accepted you. He has made you part of his family. He has prepared a future for you here on earth and yes, then in heaven with him for all eternity. Set your mind on truth. Think about that which is true. Then he says, think on that which is noble. Literally that which is honourable. That which is worthy of respect. That's a whole lot and uh, our world that is not respectable and Christians should have nothing to do with those things. We want to avoid blatant racism. We want to avoid riotous behaviour. We want to avoid sexual sin. We want to avoid thinking about evil. But that doesn't mean we hide our heads in the sand and avoid what is unpleasant and displeasing. But it does mean that we do not focus our attention on dishonourable things and permit them to control our thoughts. Rather, we think on what is honourable. We think on that which is noble. And that word refers to that which is majestic and awe-inspiring as well. That is which is worthy of respect. So indeed, that draws our mind straight to God again, doesn't it? Truth speaks of God. Nobility speaks of, uh, of God. That majesty, that awe. Then he says, think on what is right. And again, we're, we're thinking on God. Th- and that word is used of God himself, who is righteous, of Jesus Christ. Thus we are to be a righteous people. As John writes in 1 John 3 and 7, Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. He who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who does what is sinful is of the devil. To think on what is right means to think on the holy nature of God, especially as revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. And to model our behaviour after him, keep looking to Jesus always. But also to think on what is uh, pure. We're likely talking about moral purity here, given that the people then, just as the people today, uh, were constantly attacked by temptations to sexual impurity. We live in an age where people can get access to sexual images at the click of a button at the tap of a phone. It can be uh, done, hidden away in secret on our screens. 
As Christians, we must say no to our sexually impure culture and focus on moral purity. Our minds are to gaze on what is pure. We are to focus on Jesus, the only one who ever lived that didn't sin. We are to think on his purity, what that means for us. Think on what is lovely. Lovely means beautiful, attractive. It means what is pleasing, what is agreeable. At times we all find ourselves attracted to that which is evil. But this word must be taken within the context, meaning that which is both pure and attractive. Jesus Christ is inherently attractive. And so we should think on our lovely Saviour who gave himself for us on the cross. As we embrace thoughts which are lovely, we will bar from entrance into our minds thoughts which are not pleasing. We will bar from our minds thought which foster worry and anxiety. And we're to think on that which is admirable. That which is admirable. That word means well sounding, appealing. Uh, the King James translates it whoever thinks, uh, whatsoever things are of good report. Christians are not to listen to gossip about other people. Their minds are to receive and think good things about others. We are to think about that which is right and, and appealing and well sounding and of good report. And Paul sums all of that up. When he says, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about the good, the praiseworthy in your life and in the lives of those around. Think about all those things that set our minds on God and the things of God. I want you to turn to Psalm 19 now with me because I want you to compare this list to David's descriptions of the word of God in verses 7 to 9 of Psalm 19. Just see the parallels here. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are sure and altogether righteous. The Christian who fills their hearts and minds with God's word will have a built-in radar for detecting wrong thoughts. Right thinking is the result of daily meditation on the word of God. Friends, fill your minds with that which is of God. Start your day, every day, each day, every day, hearing God's word. And throughout the day, use right thinking. Think on that which is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent and praiseworthy. Think on God. Focus on what is excellent. The King James Version of Proverbs 23, 7 reads this. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. As a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. What you think today, you become tomorrow. Your mind is the best predictor of your future. If you think you can't, then you probably won't. If you think angry thoughts, angry words are sure to follow. If you fill your mind with sexual fantasies, your body will find a way to fulfil those desires. If you dwell on your problems, they will soon overwhelm you. If you feel like a victim, you will soon become one. If you give way to worry, don't be surprised when you get ulcers. If you think low thoughts, low living is soon to follow. If you expect defeat, you'll probably lose. If you dwell on rejection, you will set yourself up for even more rejection. If you focus on how others misunderstand you, you will soon become angry and bitter. What goes in must come out. Sooner or later, your thoughts translate into reality. You're not what you think you are, but what you think you are. And you know, the flip side to all of that is also true. If you focus on the truth, 
you will speak truth. If you look on noble things, respect will mark your life. If you dwell on that which is right, that which is wrong will have no attraction to you. If you think on pure things, you will become pure. If you seek out lovely things, your life will be lovely to others. If you look for the admirable, you will find it. If you search for the excellent and praiseworthy, your mind will be lifted. Your heart will be lifted. Your life will be lifted. Here is God's prescription for believers trapped in unhealthy think, uh, living. Think on these things. Focus on what is excellent. Focus on the good, the pure, the true, the holy, the right, the lovely. Find those things that elevate the mind and think on them. Find them, you exclaim to me today. Uh, but where do I look? Look all around you. Even in a fallen world, beauty is everywhere. Truth is right by your side. Purity is yours for the asking. Things that are admirable are all around you. Pick this up. Pick this up. And be found in here each and every day. Listen. Garbage in. Garbage out. Truth in. Then truth out. Christ in godly thoughts, in that which is pure and lovely and admirable and praiseworthy in. And that's what will come out. Stop worrying and get to worshipping. Stop being fearful and start faithfully reading and living out God's word. Focus on what is excellent, think on such things. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this verse. We thank you for the incredible thoughts that are contained within it. We pray that you'd forgive us for those times when we fill our minds with rubbish when we fill our minds with things that we need not fill them with. And Lord, when we forget to fill them with that which is true, that which is good, that which is right and that which is of you. Lord, would you help us today and every day to read your word and to fill our minds with truth. Lord, we thank you that we know the truth and it's already set us free. Lord, help us to set our minds free by thinking on such things, good things, godly things, things of you. Lord, today in these moments, just help us to ponder you, who you are and all that you've done, all that you mean to us. Lord, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Father God, help us today to live for you and to honour you in all that we do. Help us to set our minds on things above. For we ask it, knowing that you will then bring us peace. And so Lord, we ask that the peace of God would be with us this day and always. Amen. Amen. Think on such things. I'll see you tonight on Zoom. Take care.